Question of Math 3C, probability... Hi guys, sorry we didn't do a live review, but with MCAT and DAT getting so big, basically the board really wants me to limit the re live reviews I do. Right, math 3C didn't make it, but at least I can do this to help out with a couple of questions people had. So one was this problem, let's talk about a general method that's going to help us out. So first, let's look at a table. And let's imagine this table has four seats at it, okay? Now let's say we have four people that we want to seat around this table. So the question is, how many ways can you arrange four different people at this table? Okay. So first, let's try it the most off. I want to make an observation that might make this easier to begin with. So number one, let's think about this. Um, let's say I had this arrangement, A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now let's also make this arrangement. Now I have these two different arrangements, right? So, depends on what the question is. So for example, if I had a question where I said, how many ways can I arrange four people around the table where you could tell the chairs apart? For example, if this were the red chair, the blue chair, the orange chair, and the green chair, then these are different arrangements. Because in the red chair, we'd have person A, but over here in the red chair, we'd have person B. Those would be different, okay? But let's say I don't tell you that. I just say I don't tell you that. So the only thing that matters is who's seated next to who. Okay, so let's try that out. Okay. So let's look. So A is next to B, B is next to C, C is next to D, and D is next to A in that order. Okay, that's, all, that's how they tell who's, who's who, right? I mean, what the seating arrangement's like. Because I go A is next to B, B is next to C, C is next to D. I can also do fancier things like A is seated across from C, and B is seated across from D. But you get what I'm trying to say. So let's look over here. Same arrangement, right? Because A is seated next to B, B is next to C, C is next to D, and D is next to A. So that's exactly the same setup as this. Everybody's in the same position relative to one another. All I've done is shifted them around the table. Okay? So as far as our counting procedure goes, if the question is how could you seat them, how many different ways could you arrange them around the table where you can't really tell the chairs apart, then these two arrangements would be the same. Do you guys agree? So there are different strategies for doing this. So let me talk about two. So number one, one is, well, we could do this. We can actually pretend like we can tell the chairs apart. So if we could pretend like we could tell the chairs apart, how many choices for who goes here? Four. So let's pretend like A goes there. Now I have three people left. How many choices for this spot? Two. Well, sorry. Four here, three here. So let's pretend like we put B down here. So B goes out. So how many choices for who goes here? Two. And how many for here? One. And let's just pretend like we place C there, and we place D there. Okay. See, everyone around the table, before I get my final arrangement, you know the rule is multiply. So this is a regular four factorial. Okay? The problem with doing this, though, is I made the assumption that you could tell the chairs apart, right? Because I said specifically, it placed someone in this chair. Okay? But remember, we just saw this. A, B, C, D is the same as A, B, C, D. So how many ways did I overcount? Well, since I started off with placing this guy down, I can get equivalent arrangements where everybody's seated in the same positions, as long, but just by moving this guy around. It's like I could get A, B, C, D. So it all depends on the leadoff man. I could also get A, B, C, D. That's two ways of doing it, so I'm going to tally them. Or I could start here, A, B, C, D, that's three. Or A, B, C, D, four. Four equivalent ways of arranging them. So every time I do a setup, I'm overcounting four times. So to fix it, I divide by four, and I get three factorial. Okay? That's one way to view this. Another way to view it is like this. Do you guys agree? It doesn't matter what chair you're seated in. It matters who's sitting to your left and who's sitting to your right. That's what matters. So if I'm A facing down, all that matters is who's sitting next to you, right? To your left and to your right. So if that's the case, imagine someone like A. A has to sit at the table, right? And actually, if we think of it this way, it doesn't matter where A sits. Because if A sat here, and I just rotated him over here, or here, or here, the arrangements will be the same, as long as who sits to his left and right are the same, and who sits across from him is the same, right? So, since A has to go somewhere, just put him down somewhere. Let's say here. But if you're like, well, that's retarded, what if A were here? No big deal, I just move the table over here, do the same counting, it's exactly the same, right? Okay, so, just place A down. But once you place A, now you don't have a choice anymore. Because if I place B here, that is different from me placing B here. Because A could look forward and go, oh, B is to my left, that's different from B being to his right. It's also different from B being across from him. So now, where I place B changes the arrangement. So now we can draw a regular thing. 
So I place A down here. Now let's look over at this seat. How many choices for who sits to A's left? There are three choices, right? Pretend like we picked B. Okay, how many choices for people who sit across from A? Well, there are two choices now, because I place B over here. That could be C or D. Let's pretend C. How many choices for who sits to A's right? Well, there's only one now, and I guess that would have to be D. Okay, so same sort of counting, three times two, all the way around before we get everything. That would be three factorial. So here's an alternate way to count this, okay? Whichever way you prefer. I personally like this one. So we're going to use that one when we do the problem that people were asking about. So the problem starts off, you've got 10 people, okay? And you want to, or I think it's even 10 numbers, or 10 people numbered 1 through 10, whatever, right? They want to sit at a round table. There are 10 spots for them. So what a pain. Okay, let me see if I could do this. So I think that's five. And I think that's five. Well, close enough, right? So five and five. Okay, so 10 seats. I'm going to seat them around the table. I don't label the chairs. So I'm just saying, how many ways can you arrange 10 people around the table relative to one another, right? But I'm going to add one more restriction. In fact, I'll make it a probability question. So the question that a student asked was actually this. What is the probability when you take these 10 people and you seat them around the table, that as you go specifically, and I don't remember if the student said clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't really matter in this case, so we'll just pick clockwise. That as you go around clockwise, you will run into the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so remember with all probability, probability breaks down into what you want over total number. So let's do the easy part first. Let's get the total number, okay? So this is what we did before. So we're going to place all the numbers, 1 through 10, at this table, right? So in that case, 1 has to go somewhere, right? And it doesn't matter where. Let's say we place 1 here. But then you're like, what if I place 1 there? No big deal. Because you can't tell these chairs apart, I would just flip them around to 1's here. So that one spot is for free. No counting required. Okay. Now. Who sits to the right and the left, or further to the right and further to the left, or way over to the right and way over to the left, et cetera, et cetera? That's different, right? If I place two over here, that's different from two being over here. That's different from two being over here, relative to one. So now I can start doing my formal count. Okay, so, so this doesn't get confusing. One is literally the number one that I'm placing down. Now in the squares, I'm not placing the numbers down. I'm just counting the number of possibilities. So I had 10 numbers to start off with. I place literally the number one here. That gives me nine other possibilities. So how many possible numbers could fit in here? Nine of them. And normally I write down an example, but in this case I won't because it'll get really confusing. So nine possibilities for who's here. How about for over here? Well, you place some number down here. I don't know which one. So there are eight slots left, I mean eight numbers left. So eight possibilities for this. You can see the pattern. Seven for this, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. And remember again, so this doesn't get confusing. This one is not a number of choices. All of these represent numbers of choices. This is really the first person I see sat down. So even though in the original problem it was the numbers one through 10, can I pretend like, let's give them a different label, let's call them A, so it doesn't get confusing. Okay, so this is a particular person, then I arrange everyone else. But notice again, what do I have? Nine times eight times seven times five times four times three times two times one. And the reason I know the multiply is when you're in the middle of making choices, you always multiply. So I have to make all these choices before I know who sits where. So I'm going to multiply, and again, 10 times, I mean, sorry, 8, 9 times 8 times 7, all the way on down, that's just 9 factorial. So the total number of arrangements is 9 factorial. Okay, now I want to count the ways of getting what I want. What do you want? Well, you want something like this, but you want to force the numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, to be in that arrangement. Okay. So again, I'm going to use the same trick. So the requirement is you need to go clockwise, one, two, three, four, five. But it doesn't matter if it happens here or here, right? Because I can just rotate the table around to get that arrangement. Because it doesn't matter where you sit individually, what matters is who's seated to your left and who's seated to your right. Pick so let's spot, just pick say here. And let's say one, okay, so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to write the numbers down. I'm going to put the number 1 here, then I have no choice. The number 2 has to be here, 3 here, 4 here, 5 here. No choice because what I wanted was this seating arrangement. 
And again, still, no counting really involved here because whether I place one here to start or whether I place one even here to start and have the rest go around, it doesn't matter because I'll just rotate the table to start with the setup. Okay? So I'm going to start like this. Now let's count what's left over. Once I place one down and place these guys like this, now I can't place, say, like the number six wherever I want. Or the number ten, right? Because if I place ten here, that's a different setup from ten being over here relative to where one is, right? So let's just count the number of possibilities now. So now I'm not actually going to put numbers down. I'm just going to count how many choices do I have. Okay, so let's count the number of choices. So you had ten numbers to begin with. We used up the first five. That means there are five left, so five choices here. You put someone here. That means there's four here, three here, two here, one here. You need to make all these choices before you're done. So again, we're going to multiply. Right? And what does that end up being? I think that ends up being 5 factorial. So the probability of having this arrangement, where you have 1 through 5 going clockwise around the table, is 5 factorial over 9 factorial. So hopefully that helps. Good luck on the end. I had Russell, and I like the answer to you.